Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lab Managers Ask the Expert webinar series. My name is Micheline, and I'll be moderating today's discussion on the benefits of consolidating your testing ecosystem. We like our webinars to be very interactive, so we encourage you to submit your questions to us at any point during this webinar. Our speakers will address these questions during the Q&A session following their presentation. And to ask a question or leave a comment, simply type your query into the Q&A box located on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll try to address as many questions as possible during our time together. However, if we do run out of time, I will forward any unanswered questions to our speakers and they can respond to you directly if possible. I would like to remind you that this webinar recording will be available on demand shortly following this presentation. So please watch out for an email from Lab Manager on how to access this free video once it's available. And I'd also like to invite you to visit the handout section for more information about this presentation. And finally, I'd like to extend a special thank you to our sponsor, Starlims. Their support allows Lab Manager to keep these webinars free of charge for our readers. And with that, I'd like to introduce our presenters for this webinar. Brandon Henning serves as Starlims Chief Product Officer and Head of Marketing. And Christopher Denham, PhD, is the Information and Data Science Technical Manager for DuPont. Brandon and Christopher, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, and thanks for having us. Uh, both Chris and I are excited to be here. So. As indicated, my name is Brandon Henning, and I'm the Chief Product Officer and Head of Marketing here at Starlins. And today we're going to speak with um, R&D and Information and Data Science Technical Manager at DuPont, Chris Deenan, about the benefits of consolidating your testing ecosystem. Again, Chris, thanks for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for the invite. Happy to be joined. So just before we start, a little bit more of an introduction. Again, recently DuPont started its testing consolidation journey with Starlims. So we wanted to dive in um, into why your organization made this decision to standardize, consolidate, and modernize tech testing, your, I should say your testing ecosystem across your R&D analytics lab, how that process has been going, and what the benefits have been so far. But I think before we do that, why don't you go ahead, Chris, and tell us a little bit more about your role at DuPont. Sure. Uh, again, thanks a lot to, to Star Limbs and Lab Manager for uh, the invite. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to come and speak with everyone today. So yeah, my name is uh, Christopher Dean. I've been with DuPont now for about seven years. I'm actually a chemist by training. So I've got a PhD in analytical chemistry and a bachelor's degree in analytical and chemistry. So I've worked in R&D labs and R&D environments for about the last 20 years now and as an active user of these systems. And um, so I've been, like I said, I've been at DuPont for seven years. The first six years of that was actually managing one of the research and development labs at one of our Minnesota facilities. And then actually about a year ago, um, I was offered the, to this role for the information and data science technical manager role. And it was it was a nice transition for me, because like I said, I've been in the R&D labs and in the R&D environment for about 20 years. And now being able to lead the information and data science group, you know, it's nice being on the other side to be able to really help the, the productivity and the, and the processes that go on within the R&D labs. And, and that's really what my group focuses on, is we really focus on the digital applications and digital tools that are used in the R&D environment. So we're specifically devoted to R&D support. So everything from LIMS, electronic lab notebook, um, electronic document library, virtual library, subscriptions, custom applications. And we, my group oversees a lot of those implementations like LIMS, for example, you know, we do those implementations with other groups within, within DuPont too, our Spark Digital Organization and other collaborators uh, externally that we partnership with too. So it's really nice. My group is really kind of that central focal point for all of our internal customers, internal R&D folks, uh, internal and external collaborators to be able to roll out these tools. Great, thank you for that overview, Chris. Really appreciate that. So I kind of jump in right in. Um, before DuPont made the decision to consolidate, what did your ecosystem look like? And what were your sites using to manage their laboratory information? Yeah, so our, DuPont has really got a, um, I'd say, unique way that we interact with our external customers. We really try to build those partnerships with our external customers. You know, we're making, doing research and development and making new products, making innovative products, you know, really trying to build a product that directly solves our customers' needs. And so because of that, we have these very close partnerships with our customers where we actually locate our, some of our R&D facilities near customer sites, near our manufacturing sites. So we have a variety of labs that are spread out kind of globally throughout the world to be able to support the different business units that we have in within DuPont. And we also have core centralized uh, leverage services labs that are also located a few of our, at our major R&D sites. So because of that, we have, um, it's very common for business units to have labs spread out through a variety of different sites and different locations. Uh, around the globe so it's and especially the DuPont environment too with us being 
undergone so many different portfolio changes over the, the last eight years now. We've had a variety of different businesses units that have joined us and become part of the DuPont company. And a lot of them had different um, historical limb systems that they've used. So this was really kind of a nice opportunity for us to really be able to take a step back and really kind of take a look at, you know, what, how do we want to consolidate these, how do we want to consolidate the limb systems that are used within these labs to be able to help support them at a corporate leverage services level, especially since we had a wide variety of different limbs and different locations that use those different tools. Got it. And when you kind of think about deciding to take this journey, what were some of the challenges you were experiencing or what were the things keeping you up at night that kind of made you think like, yeah, now is really the time for us to start thinking about consolidation because having various systems or kind of the landscape we had wasn't really going to get us where we needed to go. Yeah, there was really three things that we were really primarily focused on. I mean, number one, you know, it was definitely the data security piece of it. We wanted to make sure that we had these digital tools in place that had adequate safeguards in order to protect our intellectual property uh, within the DuPont corporation as we're trying as we're doing a lot of these research development efforts but you know we want to keep our data secure we need to keep it locked down but we also want to have a data collaboration and that was really the second thing that we were looking for with a limb system is to be one of the tools that we have in order to facilitate that global collaboration so different business units could have labs in the united states in europe in asia pacific you know we could have a variety of different labs within a single business unit that's spread across the, the world globally so it's really you know the have the secure data, we still want to have that the global data collaboration piece. And then the third piece of that is just the, the, the research productivity too. You know, in the environment that we're in now, technology is rapidly changing, customer expectations are rapidly changing, customer user requirements are rapidly changing. So you know, really being able to increase the research productivity and create additional value for the company was also one of the uh, one of the third things we were looking for as part of this journey. Got it. And was there a tipping point? as you kind of think about your journey that said, yeah, now we really need to do this. I mean, you talked a little bit about data security and some of the things that were keeping you up at night, but was there one particular thing that was really like, yeah, this is also the right time for any other particular reasons? Yeah, the DuPont has undergone a lot of portfolio changes, significant portfolio changes in the last eight years. We are uh, in 2017, we had the Dow DuPont merger where Dow and DuPont merged to form Dow DuPont. And then a lot of the different business units were combined with over the course of a couple of years to create uh, what ultimately ended up being three new companies, uh, Dow, Dow and DuPont were two of those that split out. And with us in DuPont, that really gave us, that was really kind of that tipping point there. That was really that opportunity to really kind of take a look at, okay, this is our new portfolio. This is our new DuPont going forward. You know, how do we adequately support these labs from a corporate leverage services perspective and really be able to help bring additional research productivity and, and value creation, you know, to the new DuPonts and the new R&D organization and technology organization that was formed. So that really gave us, that was really kind of a nice, kind of almost reset. You know, we've got this new portfolio now, we've got new companies, we've got new labs, we've got new business units. You know, how can we, how can we kind of take a, a step back and really look at from a, from a big, you know, from a high level view, what can we do to really be able to help support you know, all of the new, all of the existing Heritage Dow labs that we had, and also the new labs that were joining the Dow, the DuPont family, sorry, that came over from Dow. Uh, yeah, definitely sounds like a good time to uh, start to look at your overall infrastructure and what you need. So as you started that journey um, and started searching for a vendor, kind of what were the key criteria you were looking for and what goals were you looking for? What 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 really were you, you know, as you thought about that decision, did you need to see from a vendor to make sure you were going to get what you needed and weren't able to achieve the goals you were trying to achieve? Yeah, especially within, you know, the R&D environment with our different R&D processes, there, there's a, it's a rapidly changing um, environment. So we really wanted to be able to create this improved productivity while also having the flexibility in order to be able to, you know, adapt to our ever to quickly changing R&D processes. And that's when we teamed up with our external collaboration partners, really be able to help kind of get an idea, you know, what are the, the key user requirements in a variety of our different R&D labs within DuPont and how can we get a modern limb system to be able to help support that, those, those processes. And, you know, we really needed to have, you know, those data, those data collaboration, data security pieces are important. But really when it came to supporting the R&D labs, that was really where we identified, you know, there's a lot of different workflows. These workflows can be changing. We can add new methods, new tests, new analytes, new samples, new materials. We really needed to have the flexibility on, you know, at, at least every six months, if not more often, to be able to 
quickly change and update the configuration of the LIMS system to be able to adapt to our the new processes or new tests or new material that we were uh, that we were developing. So it was really that need for those configurable workflows for the sample management resource unit testing. And then also a variety of our labs to do a, a pretty you know, mature formulation development. So really being able to manage the formulation development pieces, the analytical lab process piece, and really it's kind of, especially these modern LIMS systems getting into more of the advanced data visualization capabilities. Got it. So, so with that, one of the things you mentioned a couple of times there was a modern limbs. When you think about a modern limbs, what are kind of the key things that you think of that you would qualify or describe as part of a modern limb solution? Yeah, the, there's kind of two different ways of looking at it. So you have kind of the more of a traditional limb system, which is really managing the actual flow of samples through the lab. So you're, um, you have a sample that comes in, there's a sample analysis request that comes with it. There's a variety of analyses that are performed on that sample, and then those samples are reported out. And that's really kind of more of a traditional limb system, just managing the process, the sample flow and the lab processes piece. The modern limb systems really give you the ability to really kind of unleash the power of the digital tool to really be able to get more and faster innovation and faster feedback into the entire research and development process. So the modern limb system, it still does the sample analysis request, um, tracking the sample throughout the lab, but it really has the additional capabilities of being able to be part of the, the overall digital solution. So instead of being a standalone system, it can now be connected to other systems, such as if you're doing, say, a design of experiments, you're going to have you know, your sample requests, your samples going to be analyzed. The analysis of those experiments, the analysis of those samples can actually go into the experiments themselves. Now you're looking at the overall experiment that was performed, which now that can feed back into creating a, a revised or next you know, version of the design of experiments. And then from there, you know, more experiments are more experiments are created, more experiments are performed, more samples are performed. You know, it really helps become one of the tools in the digital toolbox to be able to help really kind of give more of that feedback and really help be able to, um, you know, uh, make it a much more quicker and agile process when it comes into designing you know, new products and new processes. Got it. So it sounds like beyond the limbs, the, the capability to integrate with other systems in your ecosystem, yeah. lab equipment and things like that were critical to kind of what you were looking for in a modern limb solution. Yeah, and that's definitely some of the feedback we got from our customers too, as we were talking, you know, discussing with our internal customers, you know, and really get an idea of what are our internal research and development, you know, technicians and researchers and collaborators really getting, you know, that was really some of that, really where the modern limb system kind of helps fill that gap is there was a lot of the voice of the customers we were getting internally was, you know, really focused a lot around instrument instrument connectivity, being able to have the instruments on the have the instruments online, have them you know have the ability to talk to a limb system to be able to put those results directly into the limb system. Where now you've got an organized and structured data you know, management system that's in a centralized form too. So now that way you can search it, it's accessible, it's findable. You know, get more into the fair data type principles, and that's really being able to you know be able to leverage that from there to be able to connect to those other systems. So it's really kind of it's like I said, it's really kind of one of those tools in our data. Our, our digital toolbox to be able to help enable the, the labs processes. Excellent. So we've talked quite a bit about kind of your needs, what your requirements were, what you were looking for, kind of the key things that um, you needed in your limbs. So what what really made you choose Star Limbs? Kind of what did you see there that you thought, yeah, this is really what we need to move forward as we think about our consolidating uh, efforts and the activity we're about to undertake. Yeah, the Star Limbs, having, having Star Limbs as one of our limbs offering within the company was really a nice fit when it comes to, especially our traditional, uh, more traditional analytical labs. We have a variety of different GCs, HPLCs, ICP, MSs, you know, UV Viz type instruments. You know, the, the, the flexibility that's offered by the Star the Star Limbs system has a lot of um, capabilities that are, that will come with the system out of the box. However, the ability to customize those out of the box capabilities and functionality, that was really one of the key pieces that, um, you know, that really attracted us to the Star Limbs system, especially for uh, our more traditional analytical labs and being able to configure those workflows, add new materials, add new analyses, you know, being able to configure that system as our tests and our processes are changing. And then the, there's a lot of advanced um, functionality that comes with the Star Limbs system too, you know, being able to have the advanced analytics module in order to be able to do customized dashboards, being able to have CSV parsers that can now parse the data out of a CSV file directly into the LIMS system, my, you know, directly import it with the, take the, the the results for each each analyte for each sample, being able to get that directly into the LIMS system, speed you know increase the productivity there. 
where they, and that really was a lot of the key features that we that we liked was being able to really be able to increase the productivity of that system. You know, we really want our researchers in, in DuPont to not necessarily be doing a lot of this manual data processing, but really focus on what's the design of experiments, what's not, what information are we creating, what knowledge you're creating, you know, really to be able to do focus on the analysis and decision making and really advancing their projects and you know being able to have the the most accurate and cleanest data to be able to help make those decisions. And Star Limbs, you know, really kind of helped fit a lot of those pieces together. Uh, with with our lab processes and our research and development processes. Excellent. So it sounds like you guys are about to take quite a journey as you think yes. about <laughs> the activity that you're going to be undergoing in terms of consolidation. So what are some of the fears um, about changing your process or moving to a new solution, consolidating like this that you have, or what are some of the things you're thinking about as you start to undertake this journey? Mm -hmm. And maybe while answering that, you could tell us, um, how many sites you're hoping to implement through this journey? Yeah, so we're hoping to eventually um, get all of our research development sites uh, into the, into a limb solution to be able to really be able to have that data collaboration and digitalization type pieces. Um, can't necessarily get into specifics of how many labs we have. But, you know, we're really going to you know really kind of getting right now initial you know the kind of the initial steps in the process. Uh, we're probably we've got about six about two or three labs we've fully implemented and then we've got another about six labs that we're working on currently right now uh, as part of their implementation piece and you know really one of the challenges we run into is every lab's different some labs might have a limb system some labs might have a, a, a traditional heritage limb system uh there may lab maybe labs don't have a limb system and maybe doing it more on spreadsheets might be doing it more on shared drive folders sharepoint you know a variety of other digital tools that are good from the standpoint of they have the digital capability, which gives you some some of the data security, but they don't have the full data security that we offer by Limb system. And plus, you don't have the centralized data hub. It's more of a decentralized uh, type of data repository versus more of a centralized data a centralized database where now you can do a lot more of the searching and you know, more of the advanced analytics features on that. So it's you know really kind of one of the key feature key things that we try to do with each one of our labs is really try to understand the needs of each individual lab. What's their current digital uh, tools that they have now, you know, what's their current, you know, what's their current workflows? What do we want their to be workflows to look at and to look like? So it really kind of gives us an opportunity to work directly with the lab to get an idea of, you know, how do you do your processes today? What are your main bottlenecks? Um, how can we help you get to a to be workflow that will really help, you know, increase the productivity, but also help, you know, uh, take more of these manual tasks out of the, the normal day to day routine and really be able to focus more on the, the innovation and the research and development processes. Excellent. So it sounds like a lot of change management goes into uh, this activities or start thinking about rolling out and where you're going. So definitely yeah. good luck with that. Yeah. And that's really where, you know, it's, it's really kind of key. And you know, one of the things that we kind of figured out uh, or that we'd learned throughout our, so a couple of our implementations is uh, some of those key challenges and key learnings that we had was, you know, being able to leverage those for our future labs. Because we originally started out with just a couple research development labs, got a original kind of a, uh, user requirements so it was kind of a, a collaboration of those labs and then we'd be able to you know kind of leverage those learnings from there and it's a lot of what we what we were finding is really that communication piece is key because you know change is scary um you know you have new systems new processes potentially you know the limb system can adapt to current lab processes but maybe some of the lab processes you know have been wanting to change for a while or maybe we're inefficient or outdated processes so having the, the limb system kind of gives you the ability to kind of have the lab process processes you want supported by a digital tool but, you know, but either way it's still a change it's still scary and it's really having that you know, again like i talked about our collaboration with our external partners you know the ids team we really try to have that collaboration with our internal customers too you know the internal dupont r d researchers and technicians and really be able to understand their challenges really have that open you know com communication with them really be able to help learn what situation they're in what their bottlenecks are in and how can we help you know help them going forward Got it. So maybe one last um, thing before we move to the audience questions. If you could pick, you know, one thing at this point through your journey that's really been the greatest benefit, um, I think that would be interesting to hear. And if you had any other, you know, quick parting thoughts you might want to leave with the audience well as you think about your journey and where you're going. Yeah, I mean, really kind of we're at that, we're kind of at that cusp right now of where we've had a couple of implementations we've done. Now we're starting to get more labs and more sites, um, either with their own instances of Star Limbs or 
uh, potentially as additional sites within you know one of our existing star limbs environments and you know that's it's we're, that's what the kind of really the exciting piece right now is we're, i think we're really at that cusp really being able to see you know now that we've got multiple labs across the globe within a single business unit that are now in a star limbs environment you know we're really on that the, the verge really be able to see we're already getting productivity savings or productivity improvements within the labs but now being able to see that data collaboration piece you know that's really the we've got the productivity savings within the lab and be able to get that data collaboration piece and get more of a global uh, research and development innovation productivity you know value creation you know that's really kind of one of the, the next key things we're really working on focusing on now and it's, it's gonna be exciting to see that all kind of come to fruition excellent well we certainly wish you the best in that journey we are Happy to be a partner with you um, along that journey as well. And I think at this point now, we will go ahead and open it up. We've got some questions coming in from the audience. We wanna make sure that we have plenty of time to address those as well. Sure. So I would uh, obviously welcome the audience to continue to put their questions in and we'll just start with what's come in so far. So the, the first question is um, coming from the audience is why did you choose a LIMS for R&D as opposed to an ELN or other traditional tools. So, um, you know, often R&D labs, you hear a lot about ELN and kind of the flexibility there. So were you were you purchasing a LIMS, um, just a LIMS, or are you using it to, to do other kind of modernization activity? And really what was the driver for a LIMS in R&D? Yeah, the, the LIMS is really kind of, as I mentioned before, you know, really as we started to do the kind of the internal voice of the customer, and really working with our internal R and D researchers and technicians, you know, a lot of their uh, bottlenecks really focused on that uh, the data management piece of it. Really getting moving from an, an unorganized data, largely in project folders or user folders on shared drives or a variety of other um, digital aspects, be able to get them into more of a centralized data hub and, and organized and structured data repository. And that was really where we, um, where the StarLim solution, you know, really fit our needs. And it was, and it's one of the digital tools that we have as part of the research development process. So we already have an electronic lab notebook system. And so, and that's sometimes there's a little bit of a misconception on kind of where uh, LIMS fits in versus where the ELN fits in. And um, they're, they're, they're not, when you get into selection between the two systems, it's not so much which one of these should we get. It's really how can we leverage both of those systems? Because the electronic lab notebooks really do a nice job when you get into when you're in the lab, designing products, performing experiments, you know, creating samples, you know, the electronic lab notebook really gives you that, that flexible system to be able to document what you're doing in order to create those samples. Then when those samples are created and sent to an analytical lab or different type of lab to be tested, that's really where the limbs comes into play. So the, the limbs, probably, we, we already had an ELN, so we weren't picking the limbs to replace an ELN or in lieu of an ELN. It was really an additional piece to our digital capabilities and digital tools that we have available to R&D. So the, the ELN tracks more of the experiments, the design of experiments, how you create the samples and products. The limbs is really tracking the, the sample flow through the lab as those samples are being tested, which then feeds back into the ELN you know, to design more experiments and do your full kind of write-up and analysis of how the, the product ultimately performs. So it's really just an additional piece to our toolbox, not necessarily a replacement of anything. That makes perfect sense. Thank you for that, Chris. So another question come came in. Um, as someone that is looking to consolidate their product development testing, what would you recommend to them to start their journey? It's definitely a journey. <laughs> um, you know, we've I've really enjoyed... It, it, I've really enjoyed the process that I've been, uh, how I've been involved in this process. Because, like I said, I actually ran a research development lab for DuPont for um, six years, which is actually when how I got involved in the LIMS uh, journey in the first place. And then a year ago, I took this position. Now I'm helping, you know, collaboration with our Spark Digital organization and our external partners, you know, to be able to kind of continue on this LIMS journey. And it's it's nice to be able to have seen both sides of it. And, you know, really kind of I think the, the key place to start is really being able to collect those user kind of the way we did it is you know you collect the user requirements from a couple of different RD labs especially if you've got you know one that's maybe a leverage services lab or one that's in when better for the business or maybe they're in different business units or located in different uh, uh, places around the you know, around the world you know get a couple of different RD labs that have different processes put together kind of a user requirements document over those processes in general so now you kind of you're you're really looking for that flexible system, and then you know be able to reach out to an external partner to be able to help you do that. You know, kind of the initial screening. Um, we did hours of 
uh, demos and, and interviews with a variety of different limbs um, providers, you know, really be able to get those user requirements, get demos, get um, and even some potential proof of concept, you know, designs put together for kind of demonstrations, you know, really be able to make sure that uh, your the limb system that you're you're selecting really can meet the user requirements that you're setting out uh, for your individual labs. But really, that that key piece is, you know, really starting off with getting the user requirements from a variety of different labs, to so that way you can, you know, be, be able to make sure that you know one limb solution solution may be best for one lab, a different limb solution might be best for another lab. But it's really kind of be able to get a a good a good overview and good variety of, you know, what processes are involved within the R and D you know, or different uh, processes you have within the company. Got it. So kind of building upon that, as you think about that journey from starting the requirements through the kind of vendor selection process to the first implementation, once you decided to consolidate, how long did that process take? It was about 12 to 18 months. And especially for the initial process. And a lot of that was the initial vendor selection process. And, and that's really where you know, we spent probably about the first six months actually putting together those user requirements from a variety of different labs and really taking our time to be able to thoroughly evaluate a variety of different limb solutions, be able to see um, demos from them, get their their input on our user requirements, get an idea of how their systems could work with our user requirements. And that's really where we, you know, we really appreciated the, the partnership with Star Limbs in the beginning because, I mean, there was several hours of demos and, and meetings and conversations that we had to really make sure that you know, the Star Limb solution would definitely be a good fit for a variety of our different labs. And, it, and what we did from there too is we also, which added a little bit of additional time, but what we also did is we did after the user, um, the vendor selection process, we actually went into a POC development phase. So we actually developed, it had uh, Star Limbs develop for us a POC environment, which was just, it was a minimum viable product that type setup. So it had just a couple tests for each lab. And that way, and that really where I think has really kind of helped us, you know, really get the, uh, get the motivation for the limb system really be able to get the user buy-in is we had that poc environment that had a couple tests from for a couple different labs we were able to get something in the hands of our lab technicians lab technologists and researchers and really be able to get them to use the system and you know be able to give us direct input from our from our customers who are going to be using this on a day-to-day -day basis you know what do you like what do you don't what don't you like what should we change you know so we really took the time to get a thorough vendor selection process a thorough proof of concept concept development performed and that was really about the first year and then from there we went into full once we got the sign off and you know got the uh, uh and we and there was a lot of different changes we made you know based on that poc development so i think you know really having that thorough vendor selection process and thorough poc development process from our end users you know really helped us you know put us in a, added more time but helped us put us in a good position with good user you know and customer buy-in to be able to go forward with the full implementations and now that you're kind of into it um, as you indicated, you've got a couple labs going, more to come. Are there any learnings or anything that you th think you would do differently as you look at kind of what the process was you went through to either select a vendor or the first implementation or two? You know, any key learnings there? Yeah, really one of the things that we've um, learned throughout this process is, you know, it's there's, there's never going to be a one-size-fits-all uh, limb system. But the one nice thing about, especially with the Star Limbs, is like I mentioned before, it really being able to have the customized, the ability to customize those data, the workflows, in order to be able to closely match what we have in our labs, and um, and that can be one of the things that can be a little bit difficult with doing demos of limb systems is they may or may not. You may look at the demo of the limb system and go, "Well, that's not my lab process." True, but it can the limbs can be customized for the lab process. So I think that's one thing we kind of learned in the beginning is we really, sometimes we need to be a little bit careful on how we did the demos because you know this is the demo of the system how we configured it now. However, it's a very configurable system. So even though this has been configured now, if some if a lab is a different process, we can you know, reconfigure you know, the, the screens or the data flows or however um, we need to in order to customize that system. So I think it's really you know building that partnership with the labs to get them to really get their, their buy-in and their feedback to understand that, you know, this is the limb system that, you know, we're going to be offering or one of the limb systems we're going to be offering. This is what it can currently do. However, you know, really having that open communication piece because the language of limb systems is different from one limb system to another, 
you know, you, you, there's different adoption challenges when it comes to new technology, new software, so some new processes. So it's really being able to get those key inputs from the end users on, you know, here's the limb system. How can we customize this for you, for your lab processes, and really be able to have that open communication, open collaboration with the ultimate end customer. And with that, how is the um, last question is, I know we're running out of time here. How's the um, initial adoption been as you think about kind of the rollouts that you've gone through so far? Yep. And overall, it's, it's gone well. You know, there's there's always going to be challenges and hiccups along the way. And, you know, I, I think really one of the key things, it's, you know, we look at some of the implementations we've done on, on what's been successful and what's had some, some of its challenges. It's really been that, that the collaboration piece to making sure you have the end users and the end, the, the right end users and the right customers, you know, in the initial design implementation process. And um, I think some of the time, sometimes, you know, we may design a limb system and want to put it into a particular lab or particular environment, but we may not have gotten, let's say, the right, the right, um, you know, the, the right end users in the process or the right technicians or the right researchers or right manager, you know, wh however, um, whoever may be in, using the system. So I think it's really, that's one of the key learnings we had is you really need to make sure from the beginning you can get the right people resourcing. So that way, because it's going to take time. Everybody's got a full-time job. They've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, but it's really getting that the people resourcing with the right people in the room to really be able to understand, you know, what are your lab processes and how can we help? Not so much, here's a limb system, you know, we're going to make it work. You know, it's really how can we help you with your current processes and how can we use a limb system to be able to help improve your, your lab productivity? Great. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our session today. Again, Chris, really appreciate um, you taking the time to meet with us and chat with us today. And, give the audience some really good guidance on um, how to consolidate your system. So thank you very much for that. Certainly, um, if there are any questions we miss, we'll follow up with the audience after this to cover those. But again, appreciate the audience's time and Chris's time today. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Absolutely. Happy, happy to join. Thanks again for the invite. It's a pleasure. And with that, this brings us to the end of today's webinar. Just a reminder that this webinar will be available on demand shortly following this live presentation. Please watch for an email from Lab Manager once this video is available. On behalf of Lab Manager, I'd like to thank Brandon Henning and Christopher DeHen for all of the hard work that they put into this presentation. And I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Once again, thank you to our sponsors at Starlimbs. Their support allows Lab Manager to keep these webinars free of charge for our readers. For more information on all of our upcoming or on-demand webinars, or to learn more about the latest tools and technology for the laboratory, please visit our website at labmanager.com. We hope you can join us again. Thank you and have a great day.